Welcome to Yankee Chronicle. For the next two weeks, we are coming to you from Prospect Hill Antiques and Art Gallery right here in Sunapee Harbor. I'm your host, Abby Peel. Prospect Hill has 6,500 square feet on three floors, providing excellent viewing and experience of new fine furniture with over 100 antiques on display, as well as 21 artists in-house offering pastels, oil, and acrylics. Today, we'll meet with Corey Flint to tell us more about this jewel in the harbor. We'll get a review on the inaugural drone show from last weekend here in the harbor. And Kate Nibbley from the Library Arts Center will give us a look at their current show. Elizabeth Harper will give us a preview of the Lake Sunapee Preservations Association's upcoming bio blitz. And we'll close by meeting one of the many craftspeople who will be showing at the 2024 League of New Hampshire Craftsman's Fair coming up in the first two weeks of August. Don't go away because you won't want to miss this week's edition of your Yankee Chronicle because it's summer and there is a harbor of fun going on here in Sunapee. Please stay with us. This program is supported by Echo Communications, a digitally integrated commercial printer and mailer located in New London, New Hampshire since 1997, with roots going back much further as the Country Press, AccuMail, and the home of the Kearsarge Shopper. Echo Communications. Welcome back to Yankee Chronicle. I'm your host, Abby Peel, coming to you from Prospect Hill Antiques right here in Sunapee Harbor. And I'm now joined by one of the owners, Corey Flint. Hi, Corey. Hello. Thanks for hosting us. Thanks for having us. This is a place where we didn't really need much of a set and yeah. a, a ton of different places that we could have had uh, this interview today because you have a lot of different wonderful places in this whole building. Why don't you talk about it in, in a whole of what people can see here at Prospect Hill? Sure. It, uh, we like to think of ourselves as a collaborative collection of antiques, custom furniture, uh, new furniture, brands such as Stickley, uh, many other brands that we mix in. Um, but our heart and soul has always been in the antiques. Mm -hmm. um, part of moving over from the barn a few years ago uh, was definitely uh, to show uh, a bigger collection of art, mm -hmm. some of our local artists, sure. um, as well as some artists that have found us from across the country. Mm -hmm. So we love to love to have a collaborative mix and uh, offer the new clientele of the Lake Sunapee area and uh, the New England region. Totally. A, you, a nice collection. Do you find people that come in and they think, oh, I really want to come look at this couch, but then they, they end up buying something completely different than they originally thought? Absolutely. Happens all the time. Um, they come in looking for a specific piece, they're on a mission, and they end up leaving with something that they thought they didn't need. Totally. Um, we love those types of days for sure. And you have a, a quite a, a variety of different, obviously, furniture, tables, chairs, that sort of thing, but then you have some other little um, knickknacks almost that people could could furnish their house with as well. Absolutely. Um, everybody knows Simon Pierce. Simon Pierce is a brand that we've carried for the last uh, five or six seasons. Um, we always like to, again, mix in estate collections or collectibles. Um, so it could be vintage, could be antique, um, co or it could be something completely new mm -hmm. made by a local artisan. Absolutely. Yep. And what if you were to pick a unique or favorite, do you have, do you have something here that's just sticks out to you the motorcycle a, is still cool the motorcycles are always cool <laughs> the vintage motorcycles we uh both rick and i have a passion for so those are easy um we just recently sold a very uh very high-end artisan made loon that was carved out of a piece of uh, driftwood wow and i i would say that for the last uh, at least for the last five years that was one of my favorite pieces and so um, was it bittersweet to see it leave out the door it was it <laughs> yeah. was indeed but uh going to a local family and a great family so we're you happy must have a lot that. of clientele who uh, who are lake people or water lovers mountain lovers and yep. how much of the uh, of the inventory here do you really think about when you bring in pieces in, we, in regards to the lake yeah always always try to think about those people for sure they're kind of uh, I guess the bread and butter sure. of, of they, they come in every season uh, looking to see what we found 
they don't necessarily need anything. Mm -hmm. um, they're not furnishing a new home necessarily, but they, they're always interested. Yeah. Uh, so they're, they're very much on our minds when we're out looking around New England. Absolutely. Yeah. And talk about, too, the, the part that you will come and look at people's pieces in their house. Not only yeah. will you deliver, but you'll, yeah, yeah. you'll look at uh, some antiques and decide from your perspective of, is it something you want to bring in-house? 100%. All right, some of our favorite things to do are house calls uh, to visit estates. Uh, sometimes people will have us come in before they're getting ready to sell the house. Um, so we'll, you know, literally cherry pick just what's right for us. Um, other times we're visiting folks and, and buying out the estate not all of which comes here to Prospect mm -hmm. Hill, um, but those are those are the the best days for us. Is the, the buying is actually far more fun than the selling. I'm sure, but but, but both is sure. both are exciting. Yep. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that you will ship or deliver to people, uh, yep. so you don't have to necessarily. I always think of somebody who comes out into the harbor on their boat, and then they come and see, oh, I love this couch. Now how do I get it back? And you sure. you won't make them put it on the back of the boat. <laughs> we we definitely ship. We deliver ourselves all over New England, um, and we have different avenues of white glove delivery. Um, also pack and ship uh, locally here in mm -hmm. New London. Mm -hmm. We use Flash Photo. Um, so there really hasn't been any anything that stumped us so far as far as shipping things to get them to their destination. It's really good to yeah. know so that you don't feel like, oh no, I gotta walk this couch back to my house or something. You'll right. make that happen. We can, we can, that's the easy part actually. The, it used to be a difficult thing, but in today's world, shipping is, is easy. Amazing. Yep. Well, Corey Flynn, I'll talk to you again next week on our episode, but thank you awesome. so much for uh, hosting us and joining me today. Thank you very much. When we come back, we'll take a look at the first drone show in Sunapee and find out what people thought. But first, these words from one of the good businesses that underwrites your Yankee Chronicle. You could become one too. Contact us at info at ycnnow.com. This program is supported by HR Clough and Kearsarge Heating. Their full service model offers oil delivery, propane, motor fuels with design, installation, service and maintenance of all types of oil, gas and alternative energy systems, as well as air conditioning, water conditioning systems and their highly trained and friendly staff will assist you throughout the process of buying, installing and servicing a full line of energy products. HR Clough and Kearsarge Heating. Welcome back to Yankee Chronicle. We are coming to you from Prospect Hill Furniture, Antiques, and Art Gallery here in Sunapee Harbor. I'm Abby Peel, your host. Last weekend, the town of Sunapee and their supporters initiated the first drone show celebrating our independence. Let's take a look. At midweek, the crew from Skyworks set up camp at the Lake Sunapee Yacht Club to prepare for their Sunapee events. The days of work included prepping drones, loading and massaging software, and establishing satellite communications that would guarantee the successful shows on Saturday and Sunday. 300 different flight plans are downloaded to each drone, and then depending on where we put it in the grid, it knows its flight path. It's all done through the, uh, through the computer and the software, and the software has a, uh, uh, a collision avoidance. So when all the drones are moving around to do the different uh, different images, uh, it keeps them from colliding with each other. Storytelling is what you can do with drones that you yeah. can't do with fireworks. In addition to their preparations, Skyworks and the Yacht Club invited the Kearsarge Regional Middle School Summer STEM Camp for an introduction to the technology and future career paths for students. Your car comes up to an intersection, uses three satellites, but the satellite is still behind you. It's like a half a block. And it finally, if you're sitting at the stoplight long enough, it'll catch up to you. Or these drones need to be within two centimeters at all time. They have at most a one centimeter margin of error. We use 38 satellites. After three days of site surveying and testing, the Saturday show was staged on Lake Sunapee Harbor. Drones are placed on the ground based on the way that they are designed in the software. So, and the location and the width and the length of that. So what's happening before a show is they lay out all the grid 
they put it all out, and then they activate all of the drones to make sure that they're functional and operational. And the ones that aren't, for whatever reason, those were pulled because we have 20 or 30 extra drones here to be able to swap out those drones that aren't talking for another drone. After the show, we got a few quick reactions from several people that viewed it. I mean, this is more environmentally friendly. I'm not, I'm not terribly impressed. But okay. <laughs> I, I wish it was longer. I think it's incredibly innovative and um, very entertaining. Um, be kind of cool to do in a combination of both. I think that might be a really fun thing to do and see, but it's technology at its best, doing something new and innovative. Um, I thought it was an uh, interesting change from the fireworks. Uh, I think it's a good progression and a really good use of technology. I think it's entertaining right now, and I think it's only going to get better in the future. Um, I think that this is obviously have to start somewhere, and it was a good start and I know that the technology is out there to make this progress really far and be an incredibly entertaining and immersing experience. I think in five years or so you're going to see 90% of the shows are drone shows instead of fireworks shows because they're just that good. My son is on the cutting edge tonight. It was on Channel 9 News for having a show and people will be talking about it for a long time. Good positive. Kept the lake clean. 
no contaminants. The town can decide next year whether or not they it will be probably one on the ballot. Do you want fireworks? Do you want another drone show? They took a lot of flack over doing this, but it's a good choice. I thought it was pretty good. It could have been a little longer. It's great. Yeah. It's really nicely done, yeah. I've never seen one before. This is very, very well put together. People were a little apprehensive at first, but I, I liked them. I thought they are great. Yeah. No, that was really nicely done. This is great. Congratulations to Sunapee and the Lake Sunapee Yacht Club for having a willingness to try something new to celebrate our independence. As we go out, here are a few of the 47 reactions of the Sunapee Recreation Committee's Facebook page. With the first drone show in our region under our belts, let us know what you think. Thank you all for your thoughts. Interesting stuff. When we return, Kate Nibbley will give us a look at the current juried show hanging at Newport's Library Arts Center. But first, these words from another one of your Yankee Chronicle underwriters. This program is supported by The Intertown Record, your weekly hometown community newspaper covering the Kearsarge Sunapee Sunshine region of New Hampshire. The Intertown Record. Pulitzer Prize winning drama, Driving Miss Daisy, is set in Atlanta and spans 25 years from 1948 to 1973 when a stubborn elderly Southern widow crashes her new car into the neighbor's garage, her son forces her to take on a chauffeur. At first, Daisy refuses to rely on an African-American man to get her from one place to the next. Gradually, however, Daisy's prejudices are broken down and against all odds, he becomes her best friend. This classic play is a searing, funny, and hopeful play about friendship, respect, and love. We are thrilled to be bringing it to the barn stage. Welcome to Yankee Chronicle, and this week we are coming to you from Sunapee's Prospect Hill Furniture, Antiques, and Art Gallery. I'm your host, Abby Peel. Every year, the Newberry Library Arts Center invites professional and amateur artists to submit work for their juried show. Let's join Kate Nibley for a review of what got chosen this year. Currently on display at the Library Arts Center is the Juried Regional. This is an annual favorite, which features around 60 artists from the greater region, some right from Newport, from surrounding towns, and some from across the state. And it highlights a variety of types of artwork. Being the Library Arts Center, we are a community arts center, and we pride ourselves on having an inclusive and engaging community that supports both professional artists and amateur artists alike. In doing that, we strive to make a juried regional that represents that community. So on these walls, you'll see artwork by professional artists. You'll also see artwork by several people who have never shown in a gallery before, hung side by side. We explain this to our jurors when they are doing the process, and they use that nuance when selecting the artwork for the show. On display, you'll see traditional oil paintings of landscapes. You'll also see contemporary photographs, You'll see a lot of fiber art this time around, and some sculptures, and also some bronze casts. The Library Arts Center is located in the heart of downtown Newport, right off the common, and attached to the library at 58 North Main Street. We are here Tuesday through Friday, 11 to 4, Saturdays 10 to 2. If you want more information on this exhibit, please visit our website, libraryartscenter.org. Thank you, Kate. What a great collection of work. When we come back, we'll be joined by Elizabeth Harper at the Lake Sunapee Preservation Association to hear about their upcoming bio blitz. But first, let's hear from one of the folks that underwrites your Yankee Chronicle. These local businesses can only continue if you support those that support us. This program is supported by Main Street Bookends of Warner. For books, toys, 
games, cards, gifts, and a gallery of local art. Main Street Bookends of Warner. Welcome back to this week's edition of Yankee Chronicle, coming to you from Sunapee's Prospect Hill in Sunapee Harbor. I'm Abby Peel. Another interesting event coming up here in the harbor is a BioBlitz of Fun event to learn more about our incredible biodiversity in the Lake Sunapee watershed. Let's learn more. Yeah, so we're really excited to invite um, a lot of different scientists that we collaborate with and experts on all sorts of biodiversity to come to the center and lead a bunch of activities, displays, walks, and experiences that people can, can drop in and learn about all of the biodiversity throughout the watershed. So we'll have experts on aquatic plants, we'll have experts on birds and mammals, fish, um, all life that you can imagine that's found within the, the Lake Sunapee watershed. We'll have experts here and, and people can, can come and engage and, and learn more about that diversity. We're hoping to generate a long list of species. Um, we'll be here from 10 o'clock to three o'clock uh, and people are welcome to drop in, to either be here for the whole day or to drop in whenever they feel like coming in. Uh, and we're really excited to be able to dovetail our event with another exciting event that's happening that weekend. It'll be the Arts Weekend here in Sunapee Harbor. Uh, the Center for the Arts has gotten together um, several venues and there'll be stops along the way uh, families are welcome to stop off at, at several different venues where there will be arts events going on and will be one of those stops. We have some artists who are going to join us too, uh, so people are welcome to come to the center here and uh, paint some of the wildlife that they might be viewing on that day. We'll have some arts and crafts for kids to do too, so there will really be a lot of activities going on in the harbor that weekend for people of all ages, so I think it'll be a great weekend. So our mission is to preserve and enhance the environmental integrity of the Lake Sunapee watershed. Um, and oftentimes people don't know what a watershed is. It's essentially, if you imagine drops of rainwater falling and think about where they're going to flow into, it's really all of the land surrounding uh, Lake Sunapee that drains into the lake and then eventually out the Sugar River. Um, so we really think about how water quality is affected by all of the activities that go on uh, within the watershed and try to help people understand what they can do to minimize impacts to water quality and to ensure that we have this beautiful place long into the future. Um, and we're very lucky to be located in Sunapee Harbor uh, in the Knowlton House, which is a historic building that's been here uh, since the 1800s, which is fitting for our organization, which has also been here for over 125 years. So we've had generations of people in the watershed that have valued this location um, and really want to protect it uh, and, and protect it for future generations. So that's what we're hoping that the BioBlitz will be a day of sort of celebrating all of that biodiversity that's supported within our watershed and it'll be a, a fun opportunity for people of all ages and all experience levels to interact with scientists and to learn more about the life that's supported uh, in the ecosystem that's here in our watershed. And we're actually excited to be launching a new website that should be up um, any day now with a lot more information. Uh, but you can go to our website to find information about upcoming events. We have a lot of events that are free and open to the public. Uh, and you're also welcome to um, find more information on our website about ways that you can protect the watershed. Uh, and also, you know, we're open uh, nine to five, Monday through Friday, and we welcome people to, to drop in and see the center, um, to visit Moses, our turtle, uh, and to see our watershed table. That's a good illustration of, of where we live and, and the work that we're trying to do. Thanks, Elizabeth. There is so much going on in this area. One event that is coming up the first part of August is the annual League of New Hampshire Craftsmen's Fair at Mount Sunapee. Let's meet one of the craftspeople that will be showing there. Getting into blacksmithing has been a progression of different things I've been interested in. I started off uh, fabricating signage and was a cyclist and decided I wanted to learn how to build bicycles, so I did that and um, that gradually blossomed into something a little bit more creative and diverse, and that was blacksmithing, and it's a lot of the same metal skills, so it was a nice transition, and it's really allowed me to be more creative in my everyday job. I am a modern blacksmith. 
I would call it, and a metal worker. And I do a lot of forge work and welding and uh, copper work, um, railings. So that's uh, an example of tapering the bar to a point. And uh, I'll take another heat and I'll taper it a little bit more and then we'll put a twist in it. Being a modern blacksmith, I utilize the technology at hand. Um, I use an old school forge and um, anvil, and but also welders and grinders and um, plasma cutters. Oh. Wire brush cleans the scale off the metal and keeps your forging nice and clean. And we're gonna put a spiral on here. We're working over the far edge of the anvil. I use all sorts of fun things that you know make sparks and I can do more work with. Well, being a blacksmith, I don't actually have handrails on my house because I don't get those. I get to do handrails for other people's homes. Um, and it's, so far, um, it's been a lot of word of mouth and um, just making connections around, around the town, different, um, different uh, events in town. And I start talking to people and they start talking and I get phone calls and it's been working out pretty well that way. One of my favorite things is furniture because it allows me to create something that is functional uh, but also aesthetically pleasing. And then a lot of times I'm doing a metal frame for something and a wood top or a wood bench. And then you, you just put the wood and the metal together and that's really, uh, that's really fun. I do my own woodwork. I'm definitely not a fine woodworker, um, but I know how to make a slab of wood flat and to finish it properly. Oh, the best part of the craft, in my opinion, is getting to meet people and talk to people about what they want, really kind of dive into their interests and their style, and then try to pull from that style and create something that really speaks to them. And then you get to deliver it and they hopefully will you know, bowled over and, and start pulling apart the different details that you worked into the piece. If someone's interested in my work, I usually refer them to my website or my social media. I have an Instagram and Facebook page and that Instagram and Facebook is really what's happening now and what's in my shop and what it looks like when it's installed on my website is a lot of, um, a lot less progress pictures and more finished work. So much to do and events to choose from this time of year. Next week, we'll be right back here at Prospect Hill Furniture, Antiques, and Art Gallery. We'll hear more about this amazing store and what they have to offer. Keith Coughlin from the New London Barn Playhouse will give us a look at their balance of their season and a special Monday night event. Ben Barton will tell us about how his folks started the Barton Insurance Agency 70 years ago. And we'll close with another Craftsman's Profile as we prepare for the annual Craftsman's Fair at Mount Sunapee. I'm Abby Peel. Next week we'll be here again at Prospect Hill Furniture, Antiques, and Art Gallery here in Sunapee Harbor. You can find your Yankee Chronicle fresh every week at the same time and join us then. This program is supported by H.R. Clough and Kearsarge Heating. Their full service model offers oil delivery, propane, motor fuels with design, installation, service and maintenance of all types of oil, gas and alternative energy systems, as well as air conditioning, water conditioning systems and their highly trained and friendly staff will assist you throughout the process of buying, installing, and servicing a full line of energy products. H.R. Clough and Kearsarge Heating. Echo Communications, a digitally integrated commercial printer and mailer located in New London, New Hampshire since 1997, with roots going back much further as the Country Press, AccuMail, and the home of the Kearsarge Shopper. Echo Communications. Main Street Bookends of Warner for books, toys, games, cards, gifts, and a gallery of local art. Main Street Bookends of Warner. The Innertown Record, your weekly hometown community newspaper 
covering the Kearsarge-Sunapee-Sunshine region of New Hampshire, the Innertown Record.